Hi everyone, Kelsey here with Science North and Dynamic Earth, and welcome back to another virtual spring break workshop. Oh, I missed you. I missed you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and yes, even you, hi. Oh, I can't wait to see all of you again at Science North and Dynamic Earth later on this year, but in the meantime, I am stoked to be able to provide you some free science programming. Now, before we dive in, if it tickles your heartstrings a little bit, uh, any donation that you can make would be incredibly appreciated. Uh, and to make a donation, you can do so by going to the uh, Eventbrite registration or by clicking on the link at sciencenorth.ca. Let's get to it. So you might be wondering, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, fellow scientists, our scientific subject this morning is permafrost. But what exactly is permafrost? Well, let's break it down. You perma, so think permanent. Wait. Uh-oh. And then you have frost, or in other words, <laughs> permafrost is ground that remains completely frozen for at least two years straight. And in some cases, hundreds of thousands of years. <sighs> Just like how a puddle of water freezes on a winter night. Water that is trapped in sediment or soils or rocks turns to ice when ground temperatures drops below zero degrees Celsius. It can extend beneath the Earth's surface from a few feet to even more than a mile, covering entire regions like the Arctic tundra or even a, a single isolated spot like uh, on top of a mountaintop. Although the ground is frozen, permafrost regions are not always covered in snow. Whoa. If the ground freezes and thaws every year, like my backyard, it's considered seasonally frozen. Permafrost actually covers a large portion of our Earth. In the Northern Hemisphere, almost a quarter has permafrost. Yeah. Want to share? And when I say nearly a quarter of the Northern Hemisphere, what I mean by that is 9 million square miles, or just a little over 14 million kilometers. That's nearly Canada, the US, and China combined. It's a lot of permafrost. However, that footprint is shrinking. With global warming, upping temperatures around the world, the Arctic is warming up twice as fast as anywhere else. Faster than it has in the past three million years. And when surface temperatures rise, so does the ground, thawing the permafrost with it. Scientists estimate that there is 10% less frozen ground in the northern hemisphere than there was in the early 1900s. One study suggests that with every additional 1.7 degrees Fahrenheit or 1 degree Celsius, that there's an additional 1.5 million square miles of permafrost that could disappear. So if it's just frozen ground, why would anyone be interested? Near the surface of permafrost, there's actually large quantities of organic carbon uh, left over from plants, uh, bananas that couldn't decompose due to, you know, being frozen. But we're quickly realizing there's kind of a problem. Earth's permafrost is turning out to not be so permanent in many parts of the world. It might not sound like such a big deal, but as our underground ice melts, it's exposing long hidden threats to our climate our ecosystem, even our health. Don't believe me? Let's do what scientists do best. Let's experiment. Welcome to my lab, AKA my kitchen. 
But if no one's ever told you this yet, let me be the first to tell you. You can do science anywhere, at any time. So I invite you to join me with this experiment. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is a package of dry yeast. Uh -ha. I'll probably cut it. I only need the one. The next thing is oh, sugar. Sugar. I keep mine in a bag so that the sugar stays in the bag and doesn't get in my cabinet. Water. 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 A measuring cup. One cup size. One cup size. And an empty plastic bottle or if you're like me and you just happen to have Erlenmeyer flask kicking around, you can grab one of those. All right, I think I have everything I need. Let's start experimenting. Ah, I almost forgot the most important part. Ugh. You need a balloon. Hang on. I got one somewhere. Ah, ah, ah. I've got two of them. Red or orange. Red. <laughs> okay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to cut my package of dried yeast because I only need one. Just like that, don't need this. The next thing we're gonna do is either fill up our uh, plastic bottle halfway or our Erlenmeyer flask halfway with warm water, not boiling. Have an older human help you if you need it, okay? Scientists often don't work alone. In fact, we work with a whole team of scientists in order to do cool science. Now I'm going to fill up my either plastic bottle or my flask here, halfway with warm water. Remember, warm, not boiling. Uh, and my flask here says 500 milliliters. So what's 500 milliliters divided in half? Mm, it's about 250. So I will fill my flask up to 250 milliliters. Give me a second. My kettle's kind of hot, so I got gloves. Safety first. Remember, a safe scientist is a smart scientist. Okay. Uh, a little bit more. What do we think? Ah, a little bit more. Whoops. It's okay if you make a mess. Science is messy. That's about 250, yeah? Yes, excellent. Okay, now, set that off the side. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to dissolve some sugar into this warm water. Now, if you are working with like a big pop bottle, go ahead and dissolve about two cups of sugar uh, into that pop bottle that is filled up halfway. If you have something a little bit on the smaller end like me, just divide it in half. So instead of doing two cups of sugar, uh, I'm gonna try doing one. I'm gonna experiment. So I'm gonna take my measuring cup here, and grab my sugar. I'm going to take it out of the bag. Boop. 
I might need something to help me out. Hang on a second. Where are you? Wow. Um, seem to have a funnel. So, as a scientist, I am going to adapt and experiment and try something new. I'm going to use a piece of paper. Roll my piece of paper like so. Open it up a little bit. Ha ha! I have made my own funnel. Okay. So now I'm going to take my sugar and I'm going to put it in my water. Look at that. That's pretty cool. We'll just wait. There we go. Excellent. Okay. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of the dried yeast. Now, if you don't have a teaspoon, just use any regular spoon. It's totally fine. Like that. There we go. Dried yeast. And pop that on the top. Okay. Now, we're going to want to cover our plastic bottle and we're going to want to shake it up. Now the last thing we're going to do is put a balloon over top. Again, if you need help, just ask for it. Mine's a little off to the side, but I think it's good. Now we wait. So what exactly is supposed to happen? Well, the yeast is a fungus that feeds on sugar. So even though dry yeast looks like just a dry powder, it's actually living single cell fungi that are simply in a dormant stage. Dormant meaning having normal physical functions suspended or slowed down. In or as if in a deep 
deep sleep. Hmm. They become active in warm water and start to break down the sugar, releasing CO2, otherwise known as carbon dioxide. Yep, that's right. It's a gas related to permafrost. Looks like our experiment might need a few minutes. Let's set it aside and we'll come back to it later. It's starting to fill up. That's amazing. And what is inside that balloon is actually CO2. It's the production and release of CO2 uh, by the decomposition of the yeast inside the plastic bottle or Erlenmeyer flask. Decomposers like fungi or bacteria uh, produce their energy by breaking down that dead plant material that was once trapped in our now thawing permafrost. The process, though, produces a lot of CO2 and releases all that CO2, similar to how the CO2 is filling up our balloon. Now, decomposition happens all the time in all kinds of places, like the forest floor or the bottom of the ocean, uh, the soils in the prairies, even my compost. It is a normal and necessary process. However, as permafrost continues to thaw, more and more dead plant material decompose, creating a whole lot more CO2 that's being poured into our atmosphere at a rate and at a volume that we're just not ready for. Compared to the atmosphere today, permafrost in the Arctic alone is estimated to hold twice as much carbon. And let's not forget about methane. There's that too. And methane is a powerful greenhouse gas that traps more than 80 times the amount of heat than carbon does on our planet. The problem doesn't end there though. The more permafrost melts, the more methane and CO2 is being released in the atmosphere, which then helps heat up our climate, which then melts more permafrost, which releases more methane, more CO2 in the atmosphere, which then warms up our climate and then do you see what I'm doing here? It's this unstoppable feedback loop. And all this could ultimately turn our Arctic from this beautiful freezer that holds in all of that carbon to a carbon emitting source. For dinosaurs, these conditions would have been ideal, but for humans, the result could be devastating. I, I know it's not a dinosaur. I couldn't find a dinosaur. <sighs> Found a dinosaur! Yeah. So because of these dangers, scientists are closely monitoring the Earth's permafrost. Scientists actually use satellite observations from space to be able to look at large regions of permafrost that they wouldn't be able to look at from the ground. So cool. Listen, I get it. Permafrost, the Arctic, it just feels like a million miles away. But no matter where we live, the choices we make, however small, add up and collectively have this huge impact towards climate change and helping melt that permafrost. So what can we do? Well, we can make good choices, better choices, help reduce that carbon footprint, help slow down this cycle we seem to be in of warming up the planet, and maybe help keep that permafrost permanently frozen. Yeah. Well, that's it for today. And if you're curious to learn more or get a closer look at what exactly permafrost is, or better yet, what it smells like, be sure to check out Dynamic Earth when we're reopened. We actually have a piece of permafrost on site. And let me tell you, the smell, whew, it's pretty unforgettable. Thanks for joining me today. And from all of us at Science North and Dynamic Earth, stay safe, keep sciencing, and don't forget, if your little heartstrings are pumping, head on over to sciencenorth.ca and click the link and make a donation. Bye for now.